Hello chess friends and welcome to us out of chess channel and welcome to our series the best chess games of all times so in this series we're following the best of the best the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and today I decided to show a really really beautiful game uh, played by Temur Ajabo so Temur Ajabo is really an outstanding player I'm really glad that he recently had great success in tournaments he won also one tournament now in the last rapid tournament um, of course online he finished on the third place so Temur is in top shape and uh, I have searched a little bit more about Temur's games and I found Found really really great game from 2016 in which Temur uh, performed in this uh, rapid uh, world chess championship it uh, was sort of an open uh, open um, uh, tournament in which many uh, great players have participated and Magnus Carlsen finished on the first plate with 11 points Temur Ajabu had eight points but I think uh, his game was really one of the most beautiful games from this tournament and it, of course in chess history because I've decided to show you this one it was against the player Alexander Bortnik Alexander Bortnik is also a very interesting player he's an Ukrainian Ukrainian grandmaster and um, he's popular for his blitz and bullet play he also performed in one super final against Hikaru Nakamura in bullet chess so he's a sharp player he's a great tactician but still Temur Ajabu was slightly better and he played here very really, really in the mortal immortal chess game so let's check out now the game uh here uh, knight f3 uh, played by Temur Ajabu we have um, uh, d4, uh, d6 by Alexander Bortnik uh, we have d4 uh, we have knight f6 and now g3 we have so far the perch defense set up by black and uh, here white develops of course the long diagonal for the bishop with opportunities to attack maybe uh, here the queen side in the game we have now g6 and this game transposes now into the king's indian and uh, what did you do against the king's indian when you have already played the move g3 the most natural way is of course to play c3 knight to c3 and e4 here uh Temur goes bishop to g2 uh, bishop to g7 we have now b3 the double fiacchetto setup and i'm a king's indian my, uh, player myself i most often don't like to play against this idea especially when white is delaying the situation i will explain what i mean about that uh most of the line uh, most of the times uh, here white will try knight to d2 then you can, can go bishop to f5 knight to e4 and then trading off maybe the knights on e4 and get your bishop very active here on this long diagonal and you're trying here to compete against this bishop on g2 i've explained this line it's now similar to the Karlsbad line you can maybe check out my video uh how to play the king's indian against the Karlsbad variation if you have troubles maybe if you're a king's indian player i've explained some ideas uh how to play against the Karlsbad setup i'll show you of course the link of the end of this video so you can maybe check it out it's from black's perspective but here Temur Ajabu plays a little bit more flexible setup with the move b3 he's delaying this move with the knight this is very important because he's not allowing some bishop to f5 knight to e4 idea so as i said in order maybe to get a better understanding of this video please check out my uh, video how to beat the cards but variation of the king's in so here uh, chaos link bishop to b2 we have bishop to f5 here uh, bortnik is uh, preparing the move knight to e4 uh, we have now c4 by uh, temur ajabov we have queen to c8 preparing here the move bishop to h3 trading off the bishops here uh, bortnik is trying different ways to get rid of this bad uh, really, really nasty bishop on g2 here in the game h3 played by rajabov and not that this move only prevents uh, this move bishop to h3 by black it creates also attacking possibilities with the move g4 and here Bortnik goes now c5 Temur Ajabo uh, develops with normal moves knight to c3 and maybe there is now really the best way here to play simply knight to e4 after knight to e4 I think after bishop to e4 uh, that's the main goal of this video that I've uh, suggested you the main goal is here to trade off the pawns uh, is to go into clear fight uh, situation I think from this point on uh, the game should be equal and I see only also one game in the data based it's uh, between Pablo Glavina Grossi against uh, Diego uh, Guerra Bastida in which uh, the game ended in a draw it, it was also in international master level so here after we move bishop to e4 black is playing on a positional pin it's never allowing this knight to move somewhere then even if you play knight to h4 black will simply trade off the bishops with bishop to g2 and then knight to g2 and will have i think a decent game it's not that this uh, line is much much better for black black is not winning because black is playing this line but i think it's a very very nice uh and clarified line and a very pragmatic idea by black so here after the move um uh knight to c3 knight to c6 was played and now 
Temura Jabov plays simply rook to c1. He's placing uh, the rook on the same file like the queen. If something gets cleared somehow, maybe uh, somehow the c file gets open, then the queen could be endangered. But you're staying a little bit further with the king in the center, which is also risky. If you play g4 too early and then castle, then you're maybe even vulnerable to some attacks with uh, bishop takes g4, knight to g4, even some uh, peace sacrifices. If you advance the pawn too much, then you could have a weakened pawn structure after the castle on the king side. So here, Tamur is trying to play some moves in order uh, to force black to do something. And here, uh, already the fun starts. So uh, here, um, black is playing the move bishop to h6 and it's uh here bortnik is attacking the rook what to do if you retreat it's not so good here Tamur Rajabo found great way uh, how to play now very very sharp game he played the move d5 and what to do if you place for instance uh, the move knight to d4 it's not so good because you get a knight to e2 and the uh, knight to d2 and this knight to d2 is very risky because after move e3 your knight could get trapped so what uh, black could do maybe is to play the move knight to a4 but again it's not so much better because you get g4 you see now you have to retreat with bishop and then you get g5 uh, you get the fork on the bishop and the knight and you one of your pieces is going to get trapped so that's why bortnik uh, tried here the move bishop to c1 and uh, after queen to c1 okay black has gained of course the rook for the bishop black has upped the exchange but still this is now a really really a great example how you exp can ex uh, exploit these weaknesses when your opponent is giving up the darts for bishop in king's indian structures now there are clear targets uh these are weaknesses in the position you have to react that's the most important thing i think this position could be played if you would be able to play the move king to g7 and then play something like f6 trying to keep a com um, compact game on dark squares but so far it's not possible first your knight is hanging and here after the move g4 we have bishop to d7 and now uh temura jabov queen gets into the game the serious threat now is to play the move knight to g5 uh getting the rid of this knight maybe with knight to e4 deflecting the knight uh, from the defense of the h7 and then deliver checkmate here on h7 so what to do if you try e5 let's see this line if you try to uh block the the this long diagonal for the bishop because as we said black gave up uh, the bishop pair black gave up the very important dark school bishop in king's indian structures now uh, we have the star school weaknesses e5 is maybe blocking out uh, the dark squares on the board but it's still a bad position because we'll simply play here the move knight to g5 we will attack the h7 and now the main goal is to deflect the knight from the defense as we said knight to e4 is simply winning the game you don't have good moves if you take of course uh, knight uh, queen to h7 followed with queen to f7 is checkmate so that's why uh, here uh, bortnik tried the move knight to f3 getting rid of at least one of these attackers bishop to f3 was played and now knight to e8 and here uh Temur Ajabov is trying a similar thing he's trying also now to play maybe knight to g5 maybe then knight to h7 and again the, um, the attack here uh the h7 square because the knight is not on f6 anymore you see now that bishop is really really a great great piece so that's why uh here after move f6 uh alexander, alexander bortnik tried to close the dark horse he's trying to keep some kind of a defense here but here uh temor job of goals all in with the move h4 and this is really a great move because uh, of course the pawn is hanging but uh, Temur Ajabov had here really great at attacking opportunities after the move bishop to g4 we have h5 and now after uh, g takes uh, h5 we can immediately take but uh, even if you pass through here with the move g5 then the serious threat is here simply knight takes g5 after f takes g5 queen to g5 you see you have to cover somehow you, even after move queen to king to f7 bishop to g4 is the possibility then bishop to e6 will happen and you're going to be checkmated so that's why after the move h5 uh here bortnik tried the move uh, g takes h5 and now uh, comes really really a wild move pause the video and try to see now the best continuation um it's really hard to see it's really wild move uh as i said this was really one of the best games by Temur Ajabov. it was in fast time format so it was really incredible what Temur Ajabov saw here okay i hope you can find at least some kind of a new attacking possibilities here uh after move um, uh, uh g takes h5 Temur Ajabov tried to move knight to g5 
he's trying to liberate this long diagonal for the bishop this is the most important thing and uh alexander bortnik probably hopes here for after this move uh f takes g5 queen to g5 that he could have now escape routes with the king the king could be maybe protected because at least uh white cannot include more attackers into the game because this bishop is very important here this bishop is uh, uh really keeping uh, the position compact on the king side now pause the video uh and try to see now the best next move uh, it was really a sharp sharp line that uh, temur Java prepared here and uh what the cool part about this game was that aleza firuja recently i watched his stream uh he saw this tactic in the puzzle rush uh in this puzzle rush sections if you have ever followed this puzzle rush uh, where you have to solve tactical puzzles very fast Alreza Firuja immediately saw that, which is really, really wild. Uh, so that's how I basically um, um, found this game. I found in the comment section below of uh, Alreza Firuja's stream uh, the name uh, and uh, of the game, who played this game. So that's really how I found about this game. So it was really wild. After removing King to F7, now Temur Ajabov played here an immortal, immortal queen sacrifice with the move queen to H5. The problem is now the king is getting into a mating net combined with his bishops combined with the potential rook activity on the g file queen to h5 you have to take out the queen here bishop to h5 bishop to h5 king to g8 and now uh, after a move queen to h5 it's basically a force checkmate here in 13 moves here queen to h5 bishop to h5 bishop to h5 king to g8 there's only one square uh, now rook to g1 you can only cover with the uh, with the knight but now of course rook takes g7 king to h8 rook to e7 everything is forced here uh you have only uh, one square you can can only defend uh with the rook rook to uh, bishop to f6 king to g7 and again rook to g7 again if you try to escape here uh on a check then you get simply rook to g1 g2 wherever you go and it's a checkmate uh here with the bishop and the rook so you are forced to play king to f8 now we have rook to h7 and there's nothing that can be done you cannot prevent anymore this move rook to h8 you can only prolong the game in the game alexander bortnik tried queen to f5 and now it was rook to h8 and it was a checkmate you could maybe here prolong the game with queen to g4 uh, but again nothing grammatically is, ch uh, is changing here you can play the rook to g8 but now rook to h6 here uh after rook to uh, rook to uh, e8 we have now bishop to e6 and here after uh, rook takes e6 uh, d takes e6 this is really the engine line there's nothing that can be done here it's again a checkmate so as i said it was a forced uh, checkmate in 14 moves really really great game by uh, the legendary terry Morajavo. it was really incredible incredible attack incredible queen sacrifice and as, as i said uh, alreza firuja saw this tactic on a uh, puzzle rush really really wild stuff congratulations also to, to alreza because he is of course our great tactician from the uh, for, uh, for, uh our great tactician and a great chess prodigy of course and uh, as i always like to mention in my opinion alreza is sort of uh, world championship material so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot uh, if you want to see this um, this line uh, how to play against the scars about setups of white uh, when you play the king's indian here's the link to my video you can maybe also study the king's indian if you have troubles uh to play against d4 and you can also check out one game uh, that i've played uh, on uh, my brother-in-law's agad matters uh, stream it was against temur ajabov you can also check it out i've analyzed the game here's also the link and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and the uh, chess is the best of course